Hello students and welcome back to another geometry video. You know what to do. Pause the video, try this problem in your notes, and then unpause it to do it with me. All right, we are asked to find the volume of the solid. What is this solid? This solid is a cylinder. It just so happens to be a slanted cylinder. But remember, the height does not change. Even if we slant a, a solid, the height does not change, and the volume does not change either. We're just displacing the volume. We're not changing it at all. So uh, we need to remember our volume of a cylinder uh, formula, which is given to us by volume equals pi r squared times h. You'll notice the pi r squared is the area of a circle and then the height. So we're taking the area of the top and then we're just taking circles all the way down. How many times? Whatever the height is. We're just taking that circle for how many, how many units we have on our height. So we're going to plug some numbers in. We have that r, r stands for radius, and our radius is 8. So we have 8 squared times the height, which is 14. And we can simplify this to get the exact answer. 8 squared times 14 is 896 pi. So that would be our exact answer. But if we want an approximation, I don't know what 896 pi means. So if we want an exact or an approximate answer, 2814.867 da da da. I, know, I do know what 2800 looks like. 896 pi, a little bit more difficult. Um, let's say that we want to round to the nearest whole number. Ooh, nearest whole number. Is this 14 or is it 15? It is 15. This 8 brings us up to 15. What are our units on this? Ooh, our units over here are feet. So we have feet, just feet, feet squared, feet cubed. Volume is three-dimensional. So that's why we have the three next to the feet for three dimensions for volume. All right, good review from our last lesson. Now let's get into what we have for today. Today, we are going to be looking at volumes of pyramids. Ho oh, ho! We've looked at volumes of prisms, volumes of cylinders, now it's time for pyramids. Pyramids are very, very similar to prisms, just one little change. So today shouldn't be too bad for us. All right, so we are going to know what pyramids are, we're going to remember what pyramids are, and we are going to be able to find volume of pyramids. That's the big goal for today, finding volume. So let's jump straight into it with a reminder that volume is the cubic units contained in the interior of a solid. So we are containing space, and volume is how much space within our three-dimensional shape. A pyramid is a type of polyhedron that has one base, and then the lateral faces, the ones that go up to the point, uh, are triangles. Awesome. Moving on to our formula for the volume of a pyramid. My students, this is on your formula sheet. Uh, if you're not my student and you're finding us some other way, you have the formula right here. Uh, Google also houses it, I'm sure. The volume, V, capital V, volume, of a pyramid is one-third times capital B times H. H we know is height. Capital B, just like with the volume of our prisms, Capital B is the area of the base. That's very important. When we say lowercase b, we usually mean like a one-dimensional base. When we say capital B, we're talking about the two-dimensional base. We're talking about area. Cool. Um, and you see these two pyramids here? Remember, it doesn't matter if the height is inside the, the vertical segment from the base to the tip of the pyramid. That doesn't matter if it's inside the shape, doesn't matter if it's outside the shape, doesn't matter if it's a straight up and down pyramid or if it's a slanted period. The vol pyramid, the volume is going to be the same. It's just displaced volume. It is still the same amount of volume. All right, let's use this formula in our example for today, finding the volume of a pyramid. First, we know that our formula is that the volume is equal to one-third times capital base, two-dimensional base, times the height. So first thing, 
What is the capital B? What is the base of this pyramid? What type of pyramid do we have? I see the point. The base is going to be opposite the point. So our base is going to be down here at the bottom. And that, what shape is that? How many sides is it? That is three sides. That is a triangle. This is a triangular pyramid. So let's zoom in. I want blue. Let's zoom in on this capital B for the base. And in fact, let me highlight the base with blue then. That would make more sense. So when we want, uh, when we want to find the volume of a pyramid, we must find the, the area of the base of our pyramid. So let's do that. Capital B base. The base is a triangle. So I'm going to put a little triangle next to the B so that we know it's for a triangle. What is the area of a triangle? Ooh, this is also on your formula sheet if you're, uh, if you're one of my students. If you're not, that's okay. The area of a triangle is one half of the lowercase b base times height. So careful. The h over here is the height of the, uh, and I'll, in fact, I'll highlight this. The h over here is the height of the pyramid. That's the red line right here. The height in our, our capital B formula is the height of the triangle. Now, we're going to zoom in on this base now, the base of this pyramid. I'm going to redraw it over here with the right angle. We have six meters and we have four meters. Does it matter? What if I drew it this way and the four meters were here and the six meters were here? Does it matter? No. Because you could say that the four is your base. You could say that the six is your base. It doesn't matter. When we plug them in, if I draw it this way, it means that the four is our base. So we have one half times four times the height is six. But if we use the bottom drawing that I made, it's just gonna be one half times six times four. Is there any difference between these two equations? No, because of the commutativity of math. Four times six, six times four, same thing. Doesn't matter which one you use. So I'm gonna draw our triangle base this way, since it's arbitrary which one we use. Awesome. So 1 half times 4 times 6, that is 1 half of 4 times 6 is 24. And what is half of 24? That is 12. 12 meters squared. Squared because this is area. Capital B is the area of the base. So just a little, little recap. The lowercase h in our capital B formula is the height of the triangle, the height of the triangular base. The purple h in our volume formula is the height of the pyramid itself. So don't let the two h's confuse you. We're using h over here and then we're using h over there. If you want to use a different letter, you're like two h's, too confusing, <laughs> then you could totally use a different letter. Um, yeah, you could use T for triangle or something. All right, fantastic. I'm going to go back to the black pen to look at our volume of the pyramid. We have one third times capital B. What is capital B? It's 12. We just found it right here. The capital B is 12. So we have one third times 12 times what is the height? This H is the height of our pyramid because this V is for the volume of, oh boy, can I draw this? That is way too small. It's just, it just gets messy. The volume of our pyramid. I put a little triangle next to the B, so I was trying to put a, a pyramid next to the V, but it's not, yeah, not working out so well. You can't really tell it's a pyramid. Anyways, the height of our pyramid is nine. We can see the purple segment over there. So we have one third times 12 times nine. You can type this into a calculator, but I know that I can do it in my head because what is one third of 12? What is 12 divided by 3? That is 4. And then we have times 9. What is 4 times 9? 36. What are the units? Meters cubed. Three dimensions for volume. Anytime you want to know what letter goes after the units, ask yourself, what dimension are we in? Are we in three dimensions? Then it's a three. Are we in two dimensions? Then it's two. Are we in one dimension? Then it's, then it's one. All right. So what is the volume of a pyramid? of this particular pyramid, 
36 meters cubed. We have in black, we found the volume of the pyramid, and in blue, that was us finding the area of the base. Awesome, let's check and make sure that we were correct. We have one third capital B times lowercase h. The capital B, they found one half times four times six times nine. They did it all in one step. We did this step separately, but that's okay. They also got 36 and then they added in their units. Cubic, cubic means, means if we had meters cubed, that's what cubic means. So don't think that it's anything different. All right, one more clarification I want to make that we didn't say earlier. This is, remember, capital B times H. That was the volume of a prism. We're just taking one third of a prism. That's all we're doing. Uh, so if we took this exact same triangular pyramid, but we turned it into a prism, it would just have three times the volume as our pyramid. So the uh, what, it, what is 36 times three? I can't do that in my head, can I? Is that 90 plus 18? 36 times 3, 90 plus 18. It was 90 plus 18, I could have done it in my head. Anyways, that is 108. So the prism that matches, the prism that matches this triangular pyramid has a volume of 108. We just took the volume of the pyramid times three. You just take, for the pyramid, you just take the volume of the prism and you divide it by three. If that didn't make sense, don't worry about it. Um. But it's a very cool, very cool connection to make. We were right about the pyramid, uh, and that is what matters. Awesome. That is all I have for you today. One thing at a time, because there's so many different types of pyramids, right? You could have a hexagonal or a hexagonal pyramid. You could have a square pyramid, a rectangle pyramid, a trapezoidal pyramid. You could have so many different kinds of pyramids. So we're, ju we're just going to work with pyramids, pyramids and all the different types of pyramids. Uh, before we move on to the second half of 11.6. So now is a great time to pause and think back to our learning target and our success criteria. Do you, do you remember what pyramids are? That's step one. And can you find volume of pyramids? That's another step. So if you're like, yes, volumes of pyramids, easy. Just got to find the area of the base and then times by the height, easy. Then you are a three and you are going to help your classmates, help your siblings, teach your parents, all that good stuff. If you're, if you're kind of, sort of, you think you got it, but maybe, you know, the different bases are going to trip you up, that's okay. We got to start somewhere. You are going to start with the homework, and if you get stuck, if you get confused, consult your resources, consult your notes, maybe ask a friend or a teacher if you need to. Um, and if you are super confused and you have no idea what's going on, you are a one, and that is okay. We gotta start somewhere. We'll talk with a teacher or talk with a friend, see if you can pinpoint where that confusion is. What's, what's preventing you from getting started? So asking questions or talking to friends, pinpointing that confusion is your first step if you are a one. All right, here are some practice problems you can do to practice the skills you have learned in this video. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff, finding volume, ooh, finding height given the volume, all sorts of good problems. All right, and your launch for today. Chase excellence, success will come right behind it. If you're worried about will I be successful in life, try to do everything to a standard of excellence. Don't, don't half butt anything, if you know what I'm saying. Well, put, put all your effort into anything that, that you wanna do, put all your effort into it. Uh, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. If you don't want to do it well, then then why do it? I mean, unless it's schoolwork, right? You got to graduate. But like when it comes to hobbies, put your energy into your passions. Don't be like, ah, oh, yeah, I should like paint this bookshelf. If you don't want to paint the bookshelf, you know what I mean? Chase excellence and success will come right behind it. Work hard, work hard to a good standard and you will be successful. So that is my launch for you today. Take it with you as you go throughout your day. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Bye.